So I've come to the centre of the village of Altborough because like all English villages, the centre is the old church. This is the church of St John the Baptist. It was built in 1052 and it's quite magnificent. Nice old iron gates. And as you can see, as we come through the trays, that is an extremely old building indeed. Just look at that tower. The main tower was built in 1052, Saxon. The rest of it was added as time went on. But the really interesting thing is, you think 1052, that's old. The foundations date back to Roman times. Amazing really, isn't it? Just to sit here, looking up at that. Look at the gargoyles. Guy with the horns on his head here. Guy with what looks like a big pea shooter to upset people. That's what gargoyles do, they're imps really. They're there to upset people, to remind them to be good. Let's go into the porch. But the most interesting thing about this church is here. So what do you make of that? What on earth is it? Um, is it a cross-section of a cabbage or a slice through a human brain? And in any case, what's it doing in the front porch of a medieval church in the middle of nowhere? Well, here's a clue. If you saw the Da Vinci Code, you'll have seen something very similar in the scene in Chartres Cathedral. But I'm not telling you any more just yet. Let's go and take a walk. Altborough, of course, has been here a very long time. In fact, it's recorded in the Great Book of Doomsday as Orca Barge, which means the ridge-like cliff above the mooring pool by the river. You can imagine buildings as old as this may even have been here at the time William's men came to record the details in Doomsday. You wonder how old it is under this lime wash. Down here is something really interesting. I can't bring the bike, I haven't got my pilot's licence yet. You remember that pattern on the floor of the church porch? Well, I said we'd explain it in a bit. Does this look familiar? What is it? Well, in simple terms, this is Julian's Bower, a medieval turf maze. One of only eight left in the country. There used to be thousands. But Julian's Bower here is the only one that still retains the name. So who built it and what did they build it for? Let's take a walk around it. You see, some people will tell you that this maze is first recorded and being in existence sometime around about the 1600s. And they'll say that it was built in the 12th century by some local Benedictine monks. Well, that sort of fits in with the Chartres Cathedral thing. Because on the floor of Chartres Cathedral, there is one of these in stone. Problems though. There were only three Benedictine monks in this village with an abbot. Do you really think they had time to cut this out? And if they did, what did they do with it? On the other hand, Chartres Cathedral, as we all know now, was the headquarters of the mysterious Knights Templars. And funnily enough, a few miles down the road, there were Knights Templars. So perhaps it was established in the 12th century. But other authorities will tell you 
that in fact this is Roman and was built round about 200 AD. Now that fits in with some other interesting facts. They're found all over what was formerly the Roman Empire. The problem though comes with the name. Why is it called Julian's Bower? Some people say Julian is a corruption of Jerusalem. A medieval penitence all over Europe who couldn't afford to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem would walk the maze, often on their knees, which if it was on a stone floor was a bit nasty, and when they got to the centre, which is about there, they would say they had arrived in Jerusalem, hence Julian's Bower. But I think there's another explanation. One of the interesting things is all over England, many of these mazes were known as Troy Town or Troy's Walls. In fact, in Scandinavia, they were also known as Troll Town. Now, why should something that allegedly was of medieval Christian religious significance be named after pagan trolls or even Troy in pre-Christian times? There's a clue in the name Julian. Just forget for the moment the Julian bit. Let's look at Bauer. Bauer means something along the line of Burg or Fort or possibly Walled Castle. Troy, Walls, Walled Castle, it's possible. Julian though. It's quite interesting that one of the heroes of the ancient city of Troy was Julius, son of Aeneas. And after the whole Trojan epic, Julius was one of the antecedents of the people who founded Rome. You start to wonder, don't you? You see, that whole Mediterranean area would have been familiar with the legends of Minos and the Minotaur. Do you remember the Greek hero Theseus, who had to go into the labyrinth or maze to fight the Minotaur, the bull-headed monster? And once he went in, he had to find his way out. You see, this symbol, this pattern, can be found all over the world in areas that no Europeans had been to at the time the symbols were carved. The North American Hopi Indians had carved it, but years before the first Europeans, even the Vikings before they landed. And even more amazing, two and a half thousand years BC, this pattern was carved in Goa, way away from Europe. So what does it mean? Well, some people will tell you that if you look at it from above, it's simply a double-headed war axe. Other people will tell you there's really good evidence to prove that it's a secret Templar code. And if you look around enough, you'll find some really interesting mathematical theories which are far too difficult for me to really understand that say, if you take moments about all the points on the circumference and on the bends and on the straight bits, you really will find the formula that will give you the answers to everything. The answers to the meaning of life, the origin of the universe, and why one of your socks always gets lost in the washing machine. As far as I'm concerned though, it doesn't need an explanation. I just love it for the mystery of what it is another legend. Before we leave Altborough, there's just one other little mystery. You may notice that all the old houses are one or two storeys only. So how do you explain this? Three storeys. What's it doing here? Well, there's an interesting legend about that. A sea captain from Hull 
lived here. And his young wife one day was drowned in the Trent Falls, just where the Trent pours into the Humber. He had that house built so he could stand every day on the balcony and watch out over the river in the hope that either he would see her somehow still alive or her body washed up or, as the years went by, perhaps her ghost. It's a nice story. It's a nice legend. Let's move on.